Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna to be comparing the all-new Land Rover Defender with the Explorer Pack to the Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. Before we get into this video, though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover here in Lehigh for kind of providing me with this Defender. This is the Defender that I actually purchased from them that I'm using for this video, and we're actually filming it on their lot, so we gotta give them a shout out. Anyways, link to their inventory in the description down below. If you ever need any help or have any questions, just ask for Jordan. And then on a side note, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into the comparison. Starting under the hood of the Defender, we have a turbocharged 3.0-liter inline-six that goes through an 8-speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 395 horsepower and then 406 pound-feet of torque. With the Sequoia, we have a hybrid twin-turbo 3.5-liter V6 that goes through a 10-speed automatic transmission. Power outputs with this are 437 horsepower and then 583 pound-feet of torque. Now, when it comes to fuel economy, with real-world driving, it's about the same between the 17 to 18 mile per gallon range, despite what the EPA ratings with both of these vehicles will state. Now, before we go to the front ends, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Man, I feel like both of these have pretty flashy colors. So first off with this Defender, some things that I think are pretty cool with the front end. First off, this has the Explorer pack, so it's got that 110 decal. And then with the Defender, you've got these really cool daytime running lights. I know they're not on, but they look cool. And then you got the fog lights down below and notice how the front end is sculpted for approach angle. And speaking of approach angle, this Defender has 11.5 inches of ground clearance because it has air suspension that helps raise it up to give it more clearance, which is great. Now, popping over this Sequoia, this one is bright and in your face neon orange. I like the little TRD Pro accent piece there. And then the headlights here look pretty cool. And then you guys can see with the Heritage Toy logo down the center, notice there's a light bar just down below the logo. Now, the front end you can tell is not really sculpted um, for approach like it is with the Defender. So with the Sequoia, you've got 9.1 inches of ground clearance, no adjustable suspension. So the Sequoia is definitely down in ground clearance compared to the Defender. And I think you can kind of tell by looking at them because the Defender is in a lower ride height setting and it still looks like it's higher off the ground than the Sequoia. Now this is pretty interesting. So with the Sequoia, our time wheel setup is 285, 65, 18 in the front and in the rear. Whereas with the Defender, it's 255, 65, 19 in the front and in the rear. So I'd say the Sequoia definitely has a superior tire and wheel setup when it comes to being an off-roader. A little bit more sidewall, a little bit smaller wheels. And look how cool those wheels are, by the way. The Defender is definitely limited by the fact that it has a massive brake caliper that makes it so you can't fit a smaller than a 19 inch wheel on the vehicle. But look at like how big the fender flares are. <laughs> Both of them have pretty large uh, fender flares. Notice we got fixed side steps here on the Sequoia. No side steps on the Defender. Again, it has air suspension. You can lower it down so it's not really needed. And then when it comes to the mirror game, I'm gonna say the Defender wins because the dorky trailer mirror is just uh, funny looking. Notice they both have roof rack systems. I feel like the Defenders looks a little bit more usable than the Sequoias because like there is smaller gaps between the bars but you know at least they both have roof racks. Also the Defender has lockable storage on the side and a snorkel from the factory. Now when it comes to key fobs, functionality on them is relatively the same, um, but notice with the Defender you can turn on the lights. With the Toyota you can actually remote start it from the key fob which is pretty cool and you can also open up the hatch with the key fob whereas the Defender you can unlock the hatch with the key fob, but you can't actually open it up. I will say though, the Defender key fob definitely looks a little bit fancier. So with the hatch of the Sequoia opened up, you guys can see this is a three row SUV, but it's kind of a pointless three row SUV because well, storage space behind the third row is very limited. And then you've got like this shelf that the third row sits on. And so overall space uh, back here, kind of limited, especially with legroom because your knees are gonna be put up uh, pretty high. But what's cool is that we can lower it down. And also we do have an outlet there in the back, forgot to mention that. Now with the Defender, it definitely has an inferior hatch in terms of like usability with opening it because you actually have to like open it with your arm and it swings the side. I mean, it looks cool, but like practicality wise, right? A little bit more effort. We got an outlet back here. This is for the suspension to raise and lower it with the rear. Now this is the 110 Defender, so it's not a perfect competitor to the Sequoia. There is a 130 Defender though, that has a three row that's about the same size as the Sequoia. And so you can get the Defender in three row format. And I will say the Defender's third row is a little bit more usable than the Sequoia's, but it's not, it's still not like great, if that makes sense. Um, but that's the back there. And so, see ya. 
Now when it comes to the rear ends of these vehicles, they couldn't be more different. The Sequoia has more of like the modern like flowy soft line design with the back. I still think it looks fantastic. Whereas the Defender, right, boxy with a spare tire on the back, right? It's got that more like military tank uh, theme to it. And then also like even the lights, look how like flat and boxy the lights are compared to the Sequoia's lights, which, you know, flow a little bit more. You! The guy she tells you not to worry about. I mean, look at that mud flap difference. Also, I want to mention the Defender has independent front and rear suspension. I don't know why I pointed at the rear and I said front, but you guys get the point. Sequoia has a solid rear axle and independent front suspension, so the Sequoia technically has a better off-road setup because it's going to be able to articulate compared to the Defender that's independent all around. And then popping inside of the Sequoia, and let's try not to hit my <laughs> Defender right there. We've got a sunshade here for the rear passengers. And then, you know, you've got this like very utilitarian Toyota looking interior. You've got the cool seats here with the camo print on them. And let's actually pop in here. Room in the second row, by the way, is really good. And you guys can see here, the little storage pocket. Got cup holders, some climate controls here for the rear as well and then obviously all these rubber floor mats which is definitely a nice touch and then popping over to the defender you guys can see that it still has like a utilitarian appearance but definitely more luxury with the material use i mean you can definitely feel the difference with like the fit and finish uh, when it comes to the materials and the same thing with the seats as well i will say the sequoia seats were comfortable these ones little bit softer that's for sure legroom's not as good though uh, with this that is something to mention now you can get climate controls for the rear i didn't option that out because well i'm a cheapskate anyways headroom also <laughs> great and the defender gives you these cool alpine lights which kind of adds to the experience and then popping to the front of the sequoia again look at kind of like that utilitarian slash toity appearance right um very plasticky feeling though i mean like that is something to mention memory seat function blind spot monitoring with the mirrors and then these front seats really cool and that's the tierty pro i will say with the camo print and everything yeah just fantastic and they are comfortable they nailed it with the pedals that's for sure a bunch of controls in this section main stuff you can adjust the mirrors out you've got the tierty light bar which you can also turn on steering wheel by the way manually adjustable and a little bit of rattling with the door it's most of the mirror though that's pretty cool so toyota killed it with the steering wheel it looks fantastic has tierty at the bottom has a marker at the top i think this is fantastic and you know a lot of people have been kind of critical of this gauge cluster full digital i think it looks pretty cool definitely looks a little bit more old school but you know i've i've uh, enjoyed looking at it for <laughs> the last little bit and then this has a really good 360 camera system as you can see you can see it of every single angle with it and then as for the infotainment system uh, it's easy enough to use so now i guess we have to do this again um easy enough to use response time's great so i think they did a good job there we've got heated and ventilated seats and again look at like all the buttons and everything in normal toyota fashion lots of plastic but most of it i say feels pretty uh good and then more controls uh, down here notice it does have a rear locking differential and then here's our trd shifter which also looks really cool now with our drive line this just has four wheel high and four wheel low two wheel high as well but no four wheel auto and then you guys can see here with the drive mode select your tow haul mode your multi-terrain select which is like your off-road mode select and then your hill descent slash car control and then with the center console i mean it's pretty big and pretty normal glove box i do like this on the dash with toyota and then this has a camera mirror which is another nice feature now when it comes to sunroof action it's just a regular sunroof and well, comparing that to the Defender here, um, again, look at the door panel. I think that this just like looks a lot more appealing, as you can see. Now, some of these controls just as plasticky as what you have in the Toyota, but I will say the plastic, I don't know, it feels like less cheap, if that makes sense. And then blind spot room with the mirrors. And then here are the seats. Um, these don't look as cool as the Toyota's, that's for sure. Like there's no denying that. And same thing with the pedals. Pedals don't look as cool either. But popping in. Door definitely sounds a lot more solid, which is strange because this is a Land Rover, but you know. Steering wheel, I like the look of this. It has again, a cool utilitarian appearance, but I think the Toyota steering wheel, I don't know, it looks a little bit cooler. Let me know which one you like more. And then the digital gauge cluster here definitely looks more modern compared to the Toyotas. So that's something else. Now infotainment screen, I think this is an L for the Defender. So we do have a 360 camera system, which is great. Uh, even as an off-road mode, just like the Toyota, you can see underneath it and all that. But this has the smaller screen. Now Land Rover does have a bigger screen, which uh, I sadly was not able to get because of constraint. But even with the bigger screen, I think the Toyota screen is just like better if that makes sense in terms of like the overall size but usability on this 
is really good, so no complaints there. And then got the uh, shifter, which I prefer the shifter on the Toyota, to be honest. This one's kind of funky. Anyways, this is pretty interesting. So this is for the suspension to raise and lower it. Now with the locking differential setup, this has a center locker and a rear locker. So a little bit more locking differentials. And then you got these funky climate controls, right? They can adjust the seats as well as the fan speed and the drive mode select, which is pretty cool. So it's like all those functions into one. Um, and again, plasticky buttons here, but it feel it doesn't feel as like um, rattly and cheap as we have in the Toyota. And then you guys can see here with all the storage space, this has a refrigerator center console, which is hilarious to me. And even like leather here, which is hilarious because grab handle, no camera mirror, um, and then full panoramic sunroof here at the top with the Defender. Now, when it comes to pricing, this Sequoia TRD Pro stickers for about $80,000. This Defender stickers for $85,000. Once you add the Explorer pack, though, that bumps it up to about $90,000-ish thousand dollars. Now, something to quickly mention, if you get this Defender without the Explorer pack and without this satin paint protection film from the factory, then it would sticker for $80,000. So it'd be the exact same price as the Sequoia. So now you have to ask yourself, do you go Defender or Sequoia if you're gonna spend $80,000 on an off-road SUV? And here's the deal. As someone who has owned this Defender for like, a couple of weeks and hasn't been able to drive it because it's been broken down. <laughs> there are definitely some things you have to deal with when it comes to Land Rover uh, product. But with that being said, I mean, it's already back on the road at a relatively quick pace. And, you know, the service and everything with Land Rover is amazing. So, like, I'm not going to complain there, but you guys can, you can make your opinion based on that. With the Toyota, right, Toyotas are supposed to be significantly more reliable. However, with the new Sequoia, having this new hybrid twin turbo V6, we'll see how reliable this powertrain is in the long term. But when it comes to driving both of the vehicles, the Defender drives more like a luxury car. It's way more comfortable. Sound insulation is better. It's just a better all around vehicle when it comes to driving and acceleration is fantastic. The Sequoia, even though it has more power, doesn't really feel any faster and it just drives more like a truck. So I guess if you're okay with driving a vehicle that is, feels more truck-like, that it's just not gonna feel as refined, the Sequoia is going to provide that. Whereas if you want more of a luxury experience, the Defender is gonna give you more of a luxury experience. And when it comes to off-road capability, well, I guess I'm gonna have to find out this weekend. Anyways, that's gonna sum things up. Again, huge shout out and link to the late Land Rover here in Lehigh. I cannot talk for giving me some time with my own Defender because I'm just picking it up from them today. Anyways, I'll see ya.